So to get started, GitHub and Visual Micro. First we'll need to go to github.com and register ourselves for an account. Obviously we've logged in here. Once you've logged in, you'll see this page where we can either create a new repository or start a project. So in this example, we'll create ourselves a new repository. So we have to give it a name. And it will tell you whether this is available on GitHub, as well as a description. And then you can allow it to be public or private, depending on who you want to be able to use your repository initially. And then we can initialize it with a readme file as well. And because it's a new repository, we'll, we'll do that. Now, if there are any other files you know you want to remove from your repository, in the git ignore you can add them here we'll also be able to change this later so for now we'll just continue as we don't need to change the license that's it we have our new github repository created just the readme file in initially which is your first page your welcome page as it were so now we'll need to leave github and load VS. So once you're in VS we'll need to get another extension. So if you go to extensions and manage extensions and go to online it should be the first one but if not you can just search for GitHub and you'll find it. So it's the GitHub extension for Visual Studio that we want. So if we just download and then install that this will give Visual Studio access to all of the GitHub functionality and integration. So you have to close VS to install the plugin. The advantage of using GitHub, of course, for your projects is all of the version control features that you'll be able to use, as well as being able to share your code with the world or your select team, depending on what kind of project you're, you're running, um, which just makes it so much easier to track your code and work out what's changed where, especially when issues occur. There we go, our extension is now installed in VS, so we just have to start our project up again. We'll start, sorry, Visual Studio up again. And from here, we'll be able to open our new GitHub repository. So we'll just continue with that code for now. So if we go to the file open menu, it will be the new open from GitHub option. And here you'll have to sign in. So my credentials are saved in my browser, so it'll automatically authorize. And here's our new project. And we want to clone it to a location on our PC. So I'll accept the default. But obviously make sure it's where you want this repository to exist as your local copy. There we go. So we're now connected and have cloned our project to disk, as well as connected to the online one. We have a new output window option where you can see the GitHub changes for the, for the cloning and upload operations. And there's the switch views notification, just to let you know about the folder view. So if we go file new and add a new empty Arduino project, as normal. We just need to make sure that the location is set to our GitHub project repo. So now that's done, this will create our new Arduino project within our GitHub 
repo on disk locally. So you get your usual solution explorer of your Arduino project and your INO file. But now we see these little green plus signs next to some of the files and the projects in Solution Explorer. And if we just switch over to the folder view, we can see our sketch folder as normal with all of the plus signs again showing where a new ad is pending to the GitHub source control. So if we now go view and team explorer, we can see various options for GitHub. And if we go to changes, we can see all of the files that are pending from our computer to go back up to GitHub. Now, some of them we'll wish to exclude, so we couldn't see them earlier, or we may not have known what they were. So if you just right click on them and say ignore, that will then add them to the Git ignore, which will allow you to not deal with them as part of the source control. So any files that are different on everyone's PCs, for example, because they're local environment files, you'll wish to exclude. So if we just add a comment now as to what this commit represents, why we're uploading all of this, and then we can just commit, we can commit and push or commit, push and sync. So these are the standard GitHub operations and there's more documentation available in the links from this video. So we'll just run it with sync so it performs all the operations all in one go for us. And there we go. You can open the folders and command prompt file explorer and you can also view the history on your computer instead of going to the web interface. But if we go back to our home, we can see we have a link to our project. So if we just open that link to our project, we can look at it online as well. So there's obviously more than one commit because I've done this a few times. But here we can see, have a sketch, now files. And if we scroll through, we can see all the changes in the commit highlighted as normal. All of the buttons from Team Explorer on your PC, for example, the wiki will take you back to your web version immediately. So the two things are nicely tied together and it makes managing your source files and sharing them with people remotely much easier, safer, and you, you can't get lost with which ones work and which ones don't. So very powerful.